Hey Doombots, Tony Skinjili here with a, another team review. We finally get to do the Wave 1 Avengers. Now, as you'll notice, I'm missing one Wave 1 Avenger, but so is this team. The other two characters kind of have their own fun. So I'm just putting in generic good character that kind of works with the team to showcase it. But when we go over the team, we're going to take a look at how Iron Man and Thor both contribute to making this team what they are in the first place. Let's talk about the normal three points, availability, usability, and of course, break points. But while we do that, let's go straight into a blitz fight. So, availability of the Wave 1 Avengers. We're going to start with the core of the team. Uh, Black Widow is not incredibly available in the early stages of the game. You have to be at least level 70 before you can reach the node to farm her. Hawkeye and... Captain America are node farmable relatively early, so you can work on them if need be. Hulk, you kind of get over time through the achievements, so next thing you know, you're going to wake up and have a Hulk. The other two characters, Thor being a raid store character, and Iron Man being a pseudo-legendary, or as we call him, a retired legendary, where you can unlock him basically whenever you uh, put together enough shield characters to three-star to be able to do it. So the characters are kind of varied. Some of them are incredibly easy to get. You're gonna get them within the first month or two of play, whether it just be through playing the game or because you're really interested in target farming a character. Uh, the other ones maybe require a little bit of focus and of course Black Widow being the hardest. Because they're at different availabilities, it's hard to kind of line up when you absolutely positively want to start working on them. So my general advice for this team is don't worry just kind of let them come as you go unless they're you know a favorite of yours whether you really like captain america or hawkeye by all means go for it but i i can tell you from my free-to-play account i have all of them unlocked and i don't think i've ever farmed their node more than the time it took to three star to progress to whatever the next node was uh availability kind of simple to talk about there all of the characters have been in the game since day one so we'll move straight into that into usability which i think is the meat and potatoes of this kind of content so Usability, right? Where are we going to use these guys? As you can see, there are six members of the team with the tag Wave 1 Avengers, and they all can be used. Uh, most people will tell you off the bat correctly that Thor is the best fifth member of this team. Correct, he is. He really does make this team kind of shine. The problem is Thor is on another team. That team is the Asgardians, and they're better. They're just a better team. It's kind of foolish to take a character that's so good on a better team off to make a relatively mediocre team better. Uh, not for me. Maybe for Blitz, if that helps you a little bit, but I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't run that. And the same thing goes with Iron Man. You could put Iron Man on this team and he'll give him a little bit more damage. He'll get a little bit more damage. He'll kind of boost everybody up overall. But then you lose out on one of the important members of the Power Armor team, the the member that, if you watch my previous review, is actually more necessary than most just because he gives War Machine that death proof, and without War Machine, you will not be winning any fights with the power armor. So he does add a lot more to that team than this team. So don't look at it like this is the version of the team that's perfect. One thing you want to look at when you look at the usability of this team is where you are when you accrue them. So if you happen to be playing the game, you know, pre-Ultron, you're, you're maybe just level 60, 61, you happen to have all of the characters here, but you don't have Ironheart or Falcon for the power armor, or you don't have, you know, like Hela or Loki for the Asgardians, or, you know, you didn't waste your time farming Sif and Heimdall early on. That's great. Like, you can use these characters together. This is one of the beautiful things about some of the changes that have been recently going on in the game, you get modular teams that kind of mean something as you progress up. So if you're in the early stages of the game, you can use this team for like some war offense, maybe even some war defense if you just want to put some characters together. You can use this team for arena before while you're working on a better team like maybe the Asgardians or the Guardians themselves or anybody, whomever. <laughs> You know, you, you have a lot of uses for these characters early, but they, they're not a raid team. That's the first step. You could probably cobble together somewhat of a raid team if you throw together like Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Thor, and a healer. That might be able to do a pretty good number on raids. 
Uh, but ultimately, you're always trying to look for the best version of a team you can use with the least value for raids, as opposed to, you know, trying to take a team that you have and make them worthwhile. There are solved equations in this game. There are the best team to use for U6, the best team to use for U7, or among the best teams you can use based on what's going on. So you don't really ever want to force a team up. That's a mistake a lot of people make with teams like the Defenders. They, they bring them exclusively as high as they can to be like, look at how strong my team is. And then they reach a point where they just don't work because there's nothing they can do to make them stronger and they're just not that strong. That's this team's usability. So you're always going to get guaranteed a Blitz team and a War team out of them. And they kind of go synonymous. Blitz and War actually work very similar. The team wins in War on offense, it's going to win in Blitz, usually. If team uh, is a good defensive team in war, it's probably got some value on offense in, in, in Blitz. So it kind of works itself out that way. The Wave 1 Avengers are your, your secondary training wheels team. Like if you have them, you put them together, use them, they're super fun. But you really aren't pushing any major endgame content. There's probably some teams they might be able to counter in, in war. But if you're going to work on these specific characters, uh, you're going to lose a little bit more from things you could have worked on that might get you a better legendary or a higher rank on a legendary or be more valuable in endgame raids or you know as they introduce more difficulty sliders in the greek raids you will find uses for these characters but you never want to make them your primary go-to all-in-one team because you're just going to end up hurting yourself in other facets of the game usability pretty decent now let's go to my favorite part which is the breakpoints where we're going to invest and we're going to Talk about the characters for this team as if we were talking about them for uh, their respective team. So Thor and Iron Man is kind of going to be the same as my reviews from the Asgardians and the Power Armor. But we'll start with them and we'll kind of move our way down. So just looking at Iron Man, if you pay attention, any upgrade that you would put into him for this team is the same. Because the only changes they really got was they... Whatever they did on their previous teams, they also do on Wave 1 Avengers, which is great. They're, you know, they have their team and then they also bring that value there. So Iron Man's passive, he gets an extra crit chance to self and tech allies. Well, there are no self or tech allies on the Avengers team, so this doesn't necessarily seem like it's worthwhile investment. If you did it for power armor, you're not going to really feel any growth uh, when they move over to Wave 1, so you don't need to worry about that. Unibeam, pure damage, rocket barrage... Uh, slightly increased damage with Captain America, but since you're not going to be using him on the Wave 1 Avengers that often, this is a, if you want to, but not really necessary. Uh, and the base damage increase actually is kind of anemic, so don't worry about it. And then Repulsor Blast, just damage. So Iron Man doesn't really need much. And moving into Thor, Thor is kind of the same, uh, except that on the passive... You know, you want this passive to be the max investment on either side because you want it to do the most possible damage. And since he gains a charge now and damage per Asgardian or Wave 1 Avenger on the team, it just gets a little bit better on both sides. So there's no downside in investing in this. Lightning Storm, just damage. Hammer Throw, just damage. Nothing to do with Wave 1 Avengers. Basic, just damage. Same thing. At least if you invest in Thor... The value you're going to get is going to go later to the Asgardian, so he's somebody you could put tier 4s in to push his damage because it's going to be more meaningful later, but I wouldn't worry too much. Now we'll start with Hulk, who I think is kind of the most fun, but also the most common to be left off the team. Always angry when he drops below 50% health, his speed bar goes to 100% with tier 4 investment. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's incredibly relevant anywhere else, but it's a pretty decent upgrade for what he does especially if you're fighting him many of you guys know you fought hulk in u6s and u7s where the second he takes that full extra turn things are going to go down but ultimately 75 percent turn meter is usually enough for him to take the extra turn it very rarely does it not need uh that massive group but the other thing about this is when an enemy attacks any wave one avenger fill speed bar by five percent or an extra five percent so it's kind of meaningful. It goes to a solid 15%. It adds up over time, especially when Cap is taunting and taking all these extra. Hulk will take more turns, therefore Hulk will do more damage. If you really care, this is an investment that I would make for the Wave 1 Avenger team, but I, I just don't see much value in that team anyway. Uh, Leap, 
damage. Okay. Rage. Uh, clear all negative effects from self as opposed to three. I don't know how many negative effects Hulk's going to have on him that three isn't going to be enough, but much like any of these effects that do all versus a number, that's up to you based on where you use them. It's a good upgrade, but I don't know how useful it's going to be for the most part. Smash. Uh, the multiplier goes from 1.4 to 1.5 if below 50% health. Okay. Maybe. N nothing. Like, he's one of the free characters. We call him the welfare characters, like Wolverine. They're never going to be great. They're only going to be good within the realms of their teams. Maybe. So maybe this is the best you can do with Hulk at that point. Maybe you want to invest in him. Other than that, you're just not going to get much out of it. Uh, the third best reworked character, of course, Captain America. Uh, assemble now, basically on a full team of Wave 1 Avengers, he has a 105% block chance. And, you know, 20... 30, yeah, 20% block amount. So, with this Tier 4, he's always going to be taking about 30% less damage overall, based on his base numbers. Huge deal, because he taunts and it's just going to be a nightmare to get through anything. Blocks are also going to prevent debuffs from happening, so... He's just going to keep doing everything he can uh, when he's tanking. It's one of the best upgrades for Cap on this team and outside of it. And I'm starting to see some hybrids of teams where they use Sith, Captain America, uh, Heimdall, Loki, and Thor. And that comp of the team is, doing, is leaning on Thor's damage to do the most extra it can. Where they found another use for Hela, which I assume would be placed on the symbiotes, I guess, but... That's a comp I've been seeing a lot lately, so that kind of build is a very cute use of the hybrid abilities of these characters. You don't get as much of his block chance, but you're definitely helping Thor uh, charge up if Thor is going to be the primary damage dealer. But that's that's pretty much the best ability he, he has worth tier 4s. Shield throw is another good one. It increases the amount of turn meter generation he gets to 60% if this character has one or more wave 1 Avenger on the team, which... You know, in the previous conversation, Thor is one, but on a full team, obviously it won't count more. But that means that the second he takes his first turn, he throws his shield, which now only costs three energy as opposed to five before, and he gains 60% turn meter. Means he's going to taunt again really quickly based on what's going on. So, pretty good upgrade. Uh, I don't know how often he needs to be taunting, but if you can afford it and you really care about placing this like a war defense team, this is a huge upgrade for the Wave 1 Avengers. Uh, Inspire, not much has changed. Actually, as a matter of fact, the only benefit to tier 4-ing this is uh, you might get a third random ally, but you're still not guaranteed more than one no matter what you do when it comes to random allies. You're guaranteed to give one Avenger and one random ally one energy. Uh, when, with this upgrade, it just makes it potentially up to five total characters, but realistically, not, not going to happen. Uh, apply defense up to all allies is actually the same as applying defense up to 10 allies. There's no difference. You can't have 11 allies. So we move on. And his basic is just a basic. He always gains defense up. Nothing changed there. Nothing really to talk about. Not really worth anything, especially because his taunt is already adding defense up to him. So caps rework, pretty good. Not many uh, tier fours required, but assemble and shield throw are pretty good options nonetheless. Now we move to Black Widow, second best rework, and she's about to have another rework coming soon. Well, not really a rework, maybe an addition to her kit when more characters from her movie start coming out. But we'll just look at it as it is right now. Saboteur, she gets 15% speed, that's always been great. Always gain assist now on Hawkeye's turn. It's very similar to how Proxima and Corvus work together, where Proxima and Corvus will basically just constantly help each other on basic. Except this is just something that always happens as opposed to a 50% chance. This team is lacking damage, so getting extra shots in, especially since her basic does clear debuffs, can be huge. And Hawkeye speed, which we'll talk about in a second, makes this go off quite a bit. Uh, the other note is on stealth, uh, gain offense up and apply death proof to an allied Hawkeye. That happens pretty much at level 4, so you don't have to worry about tier 4s for that. Widow's Bite. Uh, the... Tier 4 upgrade is just damage, but because it's been changed now to pretty much guarantee its chain when Hawkeye is present, it's kind of a big deal. It works out a little bit better than it did previously, so 
If you need that extra damage, like I said, this team is lacking damage. This is a pretty good investment in one. It is a four energy cooldown. It's not ready on turn one. I don't even think it's ready on turn two, but she's so fast she'll get there before most people will take their second turn anyway. It's an okay investment. Camouflage tech, this is uh, very good. Like, surprisingly very good. Clear one negative effect from Avenger. Not Wave 1 Avenger, Avenger ally. So whoever that fifth character is in the team, if you can't use Iron Man or Thor, if it's Vision or Nick Fury, clearing a negative effect could be relevant, but it is only one. Since this attack or ability is being used multiple times, you should probably get a pretty good value out of it. It's pretty useful. Other than that, there's really no other notes. And the basic is exactly what it... It's just a damage increase to tier 4, totally not worth it. But if you're using those assists from Hawkeye, you're going to see a little bit more than just the damage you see here because she's going to be hitting and clearing buffs. So pretty good, but her rework was good. You're going to see a little bit more coming, as I said, in the future for her. But right now I would hold off on any tier 4s, waiting to see what those are. And the last and the best uh, surprisingly upgraded character, the character who kind of needed it the most, was Hawkeye. Hawkeye shot in the dark on turn. Attack most injured stealth uh, enemy for 170% damage and clear stealth. This attack is unavoidable. Great. Uh, he has a 50% chance to assist. Kind of the same as Black Widow's. Uh, the tier 4 increases that like skill shot for a stealth character by 30% damage. And it guarantees an assist whenever Black Widow takes a turn. Since they work together and they're constantly assisting each other, this uh, investment is kind of meaningful. But we'll talk a little bit more when we get to the basic. Air Burst, huge upgrade, but it is just damage at this point. Right now it attacks all enemies and guarantees a slow apply. Then it has a chance to blind additional enemies. So the target's going to be slowed and blinded. Everyone's going to be slowed. 50% chance anyone else might be blinded. Uh, all in all, it's pretty okay. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. But the damage is not worth a tier 4 investment on a situational character like this. Concussion Arrow, big deal. Slightly more damage, but clear all positive effects from primary and adjacent targets. This rework made him insane. He now does an AoE speed bar reduction that actually damages and clears all positive effects. Before, I think it just cleared the positive effects and damage and speed reduction to the main target, not the AoE. So, huge deal. Increasing that damage by 10% is not much, but the clear all positive effects versus 3. Same conversation as Hulk from before. Sometimes characters have a lot of debuffs. This will help. We'll see how it works. But it is a 4 energy attack. You're not going to use it too often. Let's see what Deadeye looks like. Deadeye is, again, just damage, although he does gain crit damage for this attack uh, and crit chance. Pretty useful. That does carry over with his assist. So if you do have tier 4s in him and Black Widow, when they're constantly hitting the same target, the damage is really going to start adding up. So this is not a terrible tier 4 investment, but it's also not one that you will particularly need. It'll just kind of round out what those two characters work together, regardless of whether or not they're on a Wave 1 Avengers team or not. So if you decide you want to use Black Widow and Hawkeye somewhere, there's a couple of Tier 4s you may want to put into that. That's pretty much it when it comes to uh, the breakpoints of this team. Overall, they have been reworked to be uh, a very usable and kind of fun team, especially in a handful of game modes. There's a Doom campaign now, and I did the last few fights with pretty much the Wave 1 Avengers, except I took out uh, Hulk and put in Shield Medic because it was just easier to have that sustain on the team. I, I use them in the first nodes of Gamma now because they're just kind of fun and they're a little bit over-invested. I don't know how reliable they'd be going forward, but you can just go ahead and put Mantis on that team because she's a guardian for those first couple waves and give them a little bit of sustain if they need it. The team is relatively good. That said, they don't necessarily unlock a legendary technically three of them can be used to unlock iron man mm, does that really count uh they're not really like a latch key you know you don't have to pop something up in order to get value out of them they're just a team and because they're just a team that doesn't have a specific goal or a specific counter right now or uh, a specific need to kind of progress, they get a B, generously B plus rating. They are, they are what they show. You know, there's nothing absolutely insane about them. They're not the new meta. They're not ever a meta team. You're never gonna have. There's no point in the game where you'll have the uh, a wave one Avengers 
and be like, well, no one can beat me now until they unlock the next X. They're just a team that works well together and they, the rework really helped them become a little bit stronger. Now, there's probably some value you're going to see in them in the future. Someone might be able to say, hey, with this comp, they can beat Black Order or the Eternals or whatever team, maybe. You know, it's possible and it makes sense. I, I actually have seen some people say that they can beat the Black Order. I don't even want to begin to imagine what the investment required in this team is to beat one team when there are already about four or five other teams that can beat the Black Order. Teams, not individual characters so i'm not a hundred percent sure that's something I, I care to hear about but you know comment below let me know what you think of the rework and more importantly where you plan on using these guys are you like me where you're just going to throw them as a blitz team with like maybe a war defense flair to them or are you going to do something crazy that no one has ever thought about and just make this crazy cap hulk thor and then like tanky team where thor is just constantly going off wink We'll figure that out in the future. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.